I've been up and working till the morning, yeah. The morning. Yeah, they've been sleeping now, I swear they storming, yeah. They storming. Yeah, and I swear I'm cooking like a foreman, like foreman. Uh, and my foreman jumping like it's Jordan like on my it's way. Broom, broom, tell him I'm my lane, I've been praying. Yeah, yeah, yeah gotta say this thing, I'm the same. I don't need another person telling me I can't. Okay, guys. What is going on? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be looking at number 25 on the top 100 NFL's greatest players list. His name is Dan Marino, and that means that we're in the top quarter. Wow. So I'll see you in a second. The quicker you're here, the faster you go. That's why where I come from, the only thing we know is... Okay. Yeah, happy hop. I was like 16 years old, and I went to see him, uh, believe it or not, at Hoover, just where they were hosting the Dan Marino show. And I told him that I was a quarterback, and I was a big fan. The Dan Marino show? He had his own show? Fan. And I'll never forget this. He put his hand right here and said, son, you're going to be a good one, young man. You're going to be a good one. Who is that? I can't recognize him. I don't know who that is. Alex Rodriguez. He's my favorite football player of all time. Ah, I so it's baseball. I mean, watching him every Sunday. 180! 180! Hot hot! Hot hot! And many years later, when I came to New York, and obviously three was not available because of Mr. Babe Ruth, I immediately thought of wearing number 13 in honor of Dan. Dan Marino was the sixth quarterback selected in the 1983 NFL Draft. I've always thought, you know you're doing something right if people start wearing your number because you inspired them. Hmm. In only his second year, he shattered the single season records for passing yards and touchdowns. And he led the Dolphins to Super Bowl 19. I love this guy's There's voice, no man. Doubt in my mind, after that game, I thought I would be back next year, the year after, being a lot of Super Bowls. I think we took it for granted a little bit that we would definitely be back. Three, four years after that, that time, I started to realize this might be a little tougher than I thought. Marino would continue to break records, but would never return to the Super Bowl. Damn. Most great quarterbacks are judged on winning a championship or not. Whether it's fair or not, uh, that's another conversation. It's funny because football is a team sport, but when you're the quarterback, they almost treat you like an individual sport, like tennis or golf. I'm the most loyal Dan Marino fan you're ever going to meet, so it doesn't take anything away from it. Those are the kind of fans you want. Let's get a drive going, man. Let's get a drive going and score some damn points. Here's a guy that had We're grinding. more passion Let's get a drive going. Desire than anyone. I remember so many games. I remember... 1985 Monday Night Football at the Orange Bowl when they, they beat the undefeated uh, Chicago Bears on a Monday night. I think he threw for like 400 yards. That was a nice run. And then I remember some of the classic games against the Jets where they would go back and forth, back and forth. One game he threw a 50-yard law pass to Mark Duper and they won the game. I mean, you live every moment with those who at the time I was a teenager and a big Dolphin fan. Those are exciting things. 30 seconds to go. It's really, really interesting hearing his um, perspective, actually. As someone from another sport, too. Marino takes the snap from center. He's looking. He's throwing. He's the line. Touchdown, Dolphin! I swear if they made the top 100 rugby players of all time, I would literally... They could bring me in do a media day, and I could talk about all my favorite heroes if they were on the list. That would be so cool. I honestly think that a top 100 rugby players of all time list would be absolutely epic. They could get, they could get ex players, they could get ex fans. You know, this would be an international, like it's not just, it's not just gonna be Americans, that's a cool thing. The top 100 rugby players of all time would be from all sorts of countries. Of course, New Zealand would be, would be stacked. But then you've got Australia, South Africa, I'd say England, Ireland, there might be a Scottish person in there, Wales. You might get an American, <laughs> you might get a Canadian, I'm not sure, but it would be absolutely epic to watch and to create, you know? Hmm, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna keep thinking about that, you know? 
I'm going to start thinking about how we could put it together. What logistics would have to happen? Because that is a fantastic idea. It needs to be made. It needs to be made. I'll write the script. When Dan Marino retired in 1999, 1999, a meaningful career record for a quarterback. Wow! So he only went to one Super Bowl, he didn't win one, but when he did retire, he had every single passing record for a quarterback there is. Really? How many years did he play? He retired in 99. He must have... I think he started in 85, did he? Let's have a look. He started in 83! 1983 to 1999. Six foot four. He's 57 now. He went in the first round of the 1983 draft at pick number 27, my lucky number. Passing yards, completions, and touchdowns. He has the granddaddy of them all now. Most touchdown passes ever. He's great. I wish I could get another 10 years of watching Dan Marino play football. And since he retired, I've never really gone back or watched Dolphins. Hmm. It's, it's hard. It's, it's like having to watch the Orioles block Howard. I know exactly how he feels. I know exactly what he meant when he said that once Dan Marino retired, he stopped watching Miami football and he, he felt it hard to because, you know, I feel the exact same way about certain rugby teams. When I was growing up, when I was like 5 to 10 to 15 years old, probably, I started, yeah, I started forgetting about rugby or watching professional rugby at the age of probably 18, 19, but that's because, you know, my, my interest died because of the fact that all these legends that I grew up with, all these guys, you know, back when I was a little kid I had no responsibilities. I loved rugby. It was it was all I could worry about. It was it was it was everything to me. But that was only because I didn't have the stresses of life. You know, all I had to do was go to school. I'd talk about it with my mates. We'd come home on the weekend after school, watch rugby, you know, I'd play rugby. I wouldn't have, you know, I'd be training twice a week, playing the games on Saturdays, watching the All Blacks Crusaders, you know, it was it was a great time and I feel blessed that I had that sport to to be so interested in, you know. But once my favourite players, once my the legends of the 90s and the early 2000s, once they retired, it's like, it's just not the same. And then, and you know, as a 20, 25 year old, trying to get back into it and trying, trying to be as fanatical as I was about certain players now, it's just not the same. And it's also not the same because they're my age. You know, these, these superstars of rugby are my age now, or even younger. And so I'm thinking, you know, it's, it's not the same. It's not the same as being a five or ten year old looking up to these guys, you know. I feel like these guys are on the same par. I feel like we're on the same, the same level now. It's just that you play rugby for a job, and I look after crazy people for a job. You know, that's how it is. And, and I guess you don't get like that until you grow up a little bit. But yeah, that was a little bit of insight. Anyways, guys. I've probably rambled too much. If you have enjoyed this video, if you like Dan Marino, if you want to support me and the channel, hit the like button. If you want to subscribe, please do. And I'll be back for number 24 very soon. Peace out, everybody. I really hope you're enjoying this series.